Hey everyone, Cobdev here, and today we're going to be making a radial damage indicator. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. First things first, I made a texture that you can download in the from the link in the description. We're going to go ahead and import that. I'm going to make a new folder. And let's go ahead and import our file. Since we want this displayed on our screen, we're going to have to put it on a widget. Now I'm going to make a new widget for this because we're going to be able to make multiple at a time. So new widget, user widget, and we're going to call it W a damage indicator. Go ahead and open it up. Is that a canvas panel? And inside here, let's add our texture. Set the image to the new one we just imported. And it's a 500, 512 by 512 image, so I'm going to make that the size. And to make sure it's perfectly centered, let's go ahead and anchor it to the center. Change the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. And set the position X and Y to 0. Next, we're going to need a couple of variables. So let's go into the graph and add a variable called instigator of type actor. This is going to be whatever hit us. And we also want uh, a reference to our player. Or we can make this a first person character. We want both of these to be instance editable, so turn on these, uh, uh, this eyeball right here, and then check expose on spawn for both as well. That way we can set it as soon as we create the widget. All right, we're gonna do this in the tick because we want the damage indicator to always be rotating every frame. So first we need to find the rotation. So we'll get the instigator and the player, and we'll get the locations of both. And then we'll get a find look at rotation. Now which direction our player is facing is also very important, so we need to get the find control rotation. Get control rotation, sorry. And we're going to split both of these because we only need the Z value for both. So let's go ahead and subtract the control rotation from the find look at rotation. So it compensates for which direction we're facing. And then we can just get our image and set its render transform angle. Plug that into the tick and let's just take our output and plug it into the angle. Let's compile and save. Now we need to actually uh, put this on our screen when we get hit. So let's open up the main HUD. Not sure where that is, so I'm just going to search for it. And let's go into the graph and we're going to make a new custom event called on hit. In this, we're going to create our new damage indicator widget. So create widget and damage indicator. Now we need to, now since we set these to expose on spawn, we're able to set these two variables right here. So let's go ahead and plug this directly into the custom event because we're going to get that at a different spot. So now let's go into our player blueprint. Let's create a function called take damage. And first things first, let's get that BPC health we made and remove health. And we can make the amount an input. And then we want to get our HUD reference, our main HUD reference, and call that on hit custom event we just made. Let's go ahead and make the instigator a input to take damage as well, but for player we can just set it to ourselves. Lastly, let's just call this take damage function when the zombie hits us. Go to our AI zombie. And on the event graph, when the sphere overlaps the character, we currently just remove health, but instead, let's call that take damage function. I'm gonna leave the amount uh, at something like 10, and then the instigator is uh, this is our zone. 
Uh, not ourself, this is the zombie self, because we're in the zombies script. So, uh, we're kind of going through a line of events, so let's walk through it real quick. Zombie hits us, it calls the take damage event in our first person character. Uh, we remove health, and then we go into our main HUD and call the on hit custom event. On hit creates a damage indicator widget and passes through these variables of who hit us, the instigator, and ourselves. And then the damage indicator takes this math and it should point the damage indicator towards our instigator from our player's uh, location and rotation. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's hit play. And it is not working. So let me look why real quick. Oh, I found the issue. I made a uh, silly mistake. Uh, when we create a widget, uh, we either have to add it to something inside our current widget. Uh, but if we don't, it doesn't know where to add it. So it just doesn't show up at all. So we can either add it to our canvas panel or just add it to the viewport. I'll just go ahead and add it to the viewport since that's the easiest way to do it. Go add to viewport and that's why it wasn't showing up. So let's try it one more time. All right, let me go to the other one, bigger. And it is opposite of what we need. So let me check this out one more time. And the reason for this is because in the damage indicator, the find look at rotation, the start needs to be our player location and the target is our instigator, not the other way around. I forget that those are not interchangeable. So third time's the charm. Let's try this out. And there we go. When the zombie hits us, we have a indicator uh, letting us know where we're getting hit from, which is perfect. Now let's just make it uh, go away because it'll just stay on our screen forever and we don't want that. So in the damage indicator, in the designer, select our image, which I'll rename to indicator. And we want to make an animation for this. So click on animations, new animation. I'll call it fade. Select it and add a track of our indicator. And we just want to make it fade out. So in our indicator, we can add the track color and opacity. Uh, open it up and we're just going to mess with this alpha right here. So let's go about a second in and add a keyframe. So it's full opacity for one second. And then about half a second in, we can change it down to zero. So when it appears, it'll just stay and then fade out. Perfect. So back in the graph, we can play this right on the begin play, or the construct, I should say. Grab our animation fade, play animation. And we want to destroy this widget after the animation's done so that it won't just be an empty widget on our screen forever. So we want to delay for the amount of time the animation is. And instead of typing this in manually, we can grab it from the fade and just get end time and plug this in. That way, if we change what the end time is, we don't have to come back in here and change this as well. After that's done, we can call remove from parent. All right, let's go ahead and test that out. And when we get hit after one second, it should fade out. There we go. So it fades out after we get hit, which is perfect. It should also work with multiple zombies. So let's add a couple more and test this. And it should just give us whenever we get hit by anybody. Yep. Now we know we're getting hit by three zombies here. All right, so this is a great start to getting hit. Obviously, we still can't die, and there's still a couple more things to do, like uh, adding a camera shake would be nice, and a blood screen, and actually making sure our character uh, can die and lose. So we're gonna go ahead and look at that in the next tutorial. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the links in the description, and while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe, and here's your second reminder to like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Darling, you